So game three against OKC was quite a doozy. And we learned a few things. We learned that Kevin Durant is impossible to defend, although that's not really anything new. But we did learn that OKC is really committed towards this um, interesting way to defend Moutier. You saw just there, they gave me a double team, which allowed Gary Harris to get wide open. But they're also switching pick and rolls now. And maybe this was just like something they came up with on the fly because... They didn't execute it very well in Game 3, in my opinion. Of course, once again, Durant is amazing. And him and Westbrook is just going to be a thorn in our side the entire time. But they really didn't execute their defense on Moutier well because, I mean, if they would have just stood packed, they'd be up 2-1 right now because they really screwed up that last play. So it'll be interesting to see what OKC does to defend Moutier here in this Game 4. Are they going to keep bringing doubles? Are they going to do it a little better? Well, I can give you a little bit of a preview and say they do a bit better of a job in terms of switching and things like that, and it's more of a challenge in this game. So, that'll be interesting. And with all that, of course, that allowed us to win Game 3 and have us take a 2-1 lead. But another interesting thing was um, Gallinari, because he, depending on the time of the game, he looked like Michael Jordan or he looked like Kyle Singler. I mean, that shot over Durant, there's no way that should have gone in. And Gallo, he hit more than a few important shots for us in Game 3. But then in the fourth quarter late, um, you're going to see on this shot here when we're down 8 points. And I'm like, come on, man, I really need a basket. Gallo, he doesn't drop it. So he had an interesting game. I think he scored about 10 points in Game 3. Hopefully he comes back a little bit more because we're going to need his shooting. Because we barely escaped out of that game going into OT. So... It's game four. Do we have a chance to give OKC a heart attack and go up 3-1? Or is this thing going to remain 2-2? Well, we're already down five points, so this is starting off well. And I mentioned how OKC's defending Moutier, interestingly, on the pick and roll. Westbrook just <laughs> hits a three ball in my face off of a screen, but luckily Nigel Hayes can come right back. Shout out to Thad Young. I'm pretty sure he doesn't appear in the footage at all here. I mean, he's a good dude, but his production for us has just declined. And then Cole Aldrich said, actually, Mitch McGarry, excuse me, he said, how the hell am I supposed to defend this 7'3 rookie? Listen, man, I don't know. Three-point game after the first. As you might expect, there's a bit to get to in the second half of this one as well. It's not as crazy as game three, but it's still pretty heart-wrenching as we finally get a rebound after, like, 2K tried really hard to pull off the offensive rebound cheese on me. They don't defend Gary Harris. And I'm pretty sure besides Westbrook's one basket to open up the video, I haven't shown OKC scoring yet, so you can see my beautiful editing on display. Dion Waiters tried really hard to get the first assist of his career, but unfortunately Cantor missed. Pope missed the three-pointer. And now I got Nigel Hayes playing point guard because why the hell not, right? And Gallo taking the worst shot in basketball along too. At least it dropped. Just don't tell Coach Nick on B-Ball Breakdown that that was our go-to play. Because I know he watches my videos like every NBA player does as well. And was that Dion Waiters? He's not having a good game. I mean, I already blocked his shot and then I robbed him of an assist. Now granted, Dion Waiters usually misses, misses shots and he robs himself of his own assist just because he's Dion Waiters. But... I guess I can help him out. Moutier inside. Seven point lead, where did this come from? Weren't we just down like 14 to 6 after Westbrook hit a three? Well then. OKC okay, gonna make some adjustments because that crowd, I guarantee they're like, really guys? We're not injured. You know, OKC in the past couple seasons, you could say because of injuries is why they haven't won a title. They're all here right now. And they even have a decent point guard in Bazemore. And holy hell, Thon Maker. He, I mean, he's, used, he's usually the guy hurting people's feelings on block shots, so I guess it's just justice that it happens to him. Gallinari trying to play some defense on Ibaka. Listen, Gallo, I'm sorry, man. You had your whole entire life to become a decent defensive player. Don't blame me if Ibaka gets a three-point play on you. Oh, I hate when he does that. I really hate when I think I got the lane and then he does the pull-up jumper. I have legitimately never made that shot because I think it's just going to be a layup. I just hold the stick down. And then, nope, it's a jump shot, and I'm like, oh, God. So it's only two points. Now i got to call the Marcus Smart play. It's in the top right-hand corner if anybody's going to ask me. And that might have been a travel, but 
it's okay because they don't call traveling in the NBA anymore. Shout out to Michael Jordan as well as LeBron James for making that possible. And so it's two points. So how is OKC going to troll me now? Durant and Westbrook are passing it back and forth and he does a little floaty shot. I was making substitutions. Here's a little thing. I should probably make my substitutions like in timeouts or when I'm walking the ball up floor. No, I just do it in the middle of a half court possession when we're down two points. It's fine. Gallinari, who you will see was valuable for us in this game, even if that shot isn't the one that's going to show it. And then also when he hits Kevin Durant in the back of the head, I'm thinking, well, maybe Justin Anderson would have been able to catch up to Durant there to play defense, but I need Gallo in there for his shooting. Ennis Cantor who had Ibaka open under the basket. Oh no, Dion Waiters. Yeah. Okay, see. Just don't have Dion Waiters in there. Actually, no, keep him in there so that way I have a better chance of winning because you have a, a zero on both sides of the floor. And you haven't seen enough of Moutier in this game. So there you go. In case you were looking for your Moutier fix, he didn't have himself a, a LeBron James, my player-esque game. It was kind of like a normal star player game, which... I don't know, maybe I'm more comfortable with, but I am also comfortable with the fact that they ain't defending Gallo. Tie game, boys, a minute and a half left. This is the only way this series can go for us against OKC. You know in real life how the Indiana Pacers are always in close games because they're not that great, but they're not that terrible either? That's kind of how we are just compared to, you know, the other playoff teams in the West. But holy hell, Dion Waiters. We screwed up on offense, and he actually hit a double-clutch layup. I mean, we've seen the entire Dion Waiters package today. We've had shots that the second it goes up, you're just like, why the hell did you shoot that? But then we also get like that one crazy play that makes you think maybe he's still worth something in the NBA. Marcus Smart play once again. Shout out to the one dude who was crying because I ran the Marcus Smart play once. And so, 24 seconds. Who do you think shoots this ball? the potential second best player in the league or Russell Westbrook. I mean, no discredit to Westbrook because he's like, what, the fifth best player in the league? But let's just see what happens. Should I have had KJ in the game? Maybe. Oh, he caught me. I went right for a second and oh boy. Well, if you remember how last game ended, it was a similar situation. There was about three seconds left and I had to get the ball to Nigel Hayes and then we went to overtime. So what's going to happen here, huh? Should I cue the epic music right now? Do I even have epic music? I don't know. But um, with seven seconds left, not really enough time for the Marcus Smart play. We're gonna have to go to the one play that I've gone to more than once in this sort of situation, with it, which is the Moutier and Gallinari pick and roll. But Gallinari, sometimes he trolls me on this pick and roll and he takes a year and a half to get there. Okay, this was much better. And, oh god, they switched the pick and roll. This is pretty bad. I gotta shoot a three, and, yeah. We're tied at 2-2. I told you before that OKC's been switching that pick and roll now. And that time it was Durant and Westbrook. It wasn't Cantor who ended up on Moutier, and as a result, that was really good defense at the end there. Could I have got it to Gallinari on a post-up? Potentially, but... Sheesh. Tied at 2-2. It's a three-game series against OKC.